So in order to do Android app development, I've put together various sh sheets for you, and you're welcome to take them. The first sheet that I've given you, they're going to be numbered simply 1 through 7, or probably more than that, because I have more, lots of instructions. And if you open the sheet number 1, again, you can print this out, but during the break, I didn't want to use a lot of paper. We have various bits of software that we need to download and to set up and configure. The first thing here is I've got the Java Development Kit. Uh, so Java, or the JDK, is our foundation for running Android virtual devices and the Eclipse development environment. After installing the software, the system path should be updated. So what I'm saying here is uh, we need to download the Java Development Kit. Now a lot of you might already have the Java runtime environment, which is different. That's the, that's the Java that often works for, for web content. It's different. Uh, this is the JDK, the Java Development Kit. It's already installed on our computers, so you don't have to do this here. But at home and on your own computer, you would go to oracle.com and follow my instructions about the right screen to download the software. Um, at the moment when I wrote this, it's on Java, it's on JDK version 8, update 20. So if you have an older version of the JDK, you'll probably be fine, but this is just to let you know this is the latest version. I just checked it today. And it's basically download the 32-bit version or 64-bit version. If you don't know what your computer is, get the 32-bit version. Usually your computer is 64-bit if it has more than 4 gigabytes of RAM. So you've got 6 gigs, 12 gigs, or something. You've got probably a 64-bit processor, so get the 64-bit version of Java, JDK. And if you don't know, get the 32-bit one. This includes an installation file. So you just double-click it, install it, choose the defaults, let it install. And what it does is it puts a new item in your program files, and we need to know that because of the following step. Now, I've been doing Android development for about two years or so, and done it in a variety of computers. Desktop computers, laptops, uh, older computers, newer computers, Macs, a variety of computers. And sometimes all of these steps go perfectly. Step by step, they work. And sometimes there's some sort of gremlin that is preventing something from happening. And everyone's got their own configuration and that's why bring it over, I'm happy to help troubleshoot it. So that's why I list here. Sometimes all you need to do is install JDK and it works. Other times you need to go in and fiddle with your Windows path so that the software knows where your JDK is installed. That's why I've got it step by step right here for Windows. I apologize I don't have a Mac instructions just yet because that's double the work to set this up. I'll get to it eventually. But this is how to set up your path on Windows. Let's do this. Because we're going to do some of this a little bit later, too. Eventually, we're going to need to do a little bit of, of CLI. CLI. Anyone know what that is? Yes? Command line interface. Command line interface. Uh, good old DOS. We're going to need to write some commands sometimes instead of clicking a, a pretty button. Uh, even though Android has been around several years now, 2007 or so, 2009, 2007, I think, uh, there's still some things that are rough around the edges, far too many for my, for my tastes. A lot of things are rough around the edges. And one of those things, you know, some people are perfectly fine with a command line. You go in, you type the commands, you, you get it done. And some of us are, well, I need to click a button because I don't know the command line. And um, sometimes we need to get into and write DOS commands or, or Linux commands or whatever. Mac commands. And it's all in my instructions, so never fear. But here's the first one we'll do just to get practice with it. Uh, we're going to open up our terminal here, our command prompt. Let's go to the start menu and type command so that the command prompt loads up. So go to the start menu and start typing command. We want to load the command prompt. How many of you wrote anything in a command line recently? Okay. 
So, how many of you have ever written anything in a command line your whole lives? Okay. See how the world has changed. It's all a GUI now, graphical user interface. But sometimes you do need, you do need to go to the CLI, the CLI, the command line interface. So here's what we'll do. Um, simply let's type Java space dash version. This, um, these computers were set up uh, last month for this semester. So we've got here Java version 1.8.0.11. And we've got, according to my instructions, version 20 available now. Now we're not so far back. It's, that's 10 versions, not really. It's 0 0.10 versions. Uh, at least we don't have Java 1.7, let's say, or 1.6. So our version is a little bit behind, but that's okay. We'll be able to do all of this. If you go do this at home, you're going to get the latest versions because I just updated it with the latest instructions. But here, did everyone get Java version 1.8.0.11, etc., etc.? So that's our version of, of Java, of the Java development kit, the JDK. That was just a little bit of FYI. That's all we really needed to do just yet. Later on, we will do more complicated commands like create app or build app, things like that. But we are going to be getting into the command prompt a few times. That's part one of the big software that we need. It's like a 500 megabyte download. You want to set that up at home at some point. The other software that we need is Apache Ant. Ant is mainly used to build our projects. Ant runs behind the scenes, but is integral to our work. Ant is uh, basically compiling our work and that sort of thing. It's getting our project ready to actually become an Android app. It runs behind the scenes. It's important. But if you don't have this, this causes a lot of problems. As I've been developing these classes over the years, um, I've been able to sometimes teach a class with never dealing with Ant. But more and more people come to me and they say, it's just not working, on, and I follow all your steps. And as I do more research, I see that it's, it behooves us to get this issue out of the way that might, prop, might crop up to install Ant. Again, where to download it is there. Current version is 1.94. How to set it up. This one does not have an installer. It's just a zip file. You unzip it, you put it somewhere in your hard drive, maybe your C drive. For example here, C slash Apache Ant. Just put it in your C drive somewhere. We need to set the path again. All the instructions are there. If you still got the command prompt open, you can type ant space dash version. This is, I usually do this when I'm first setting up my Android development environment to make sure it's working. I go to the command prompt, check the version, and see if it's working. If it's not, I stop at that point and fix it before I go any further. Because one problem builds on top of another problem. So check your ant version, and it should say Apache Ant 194. So if you don't install the JDK, the Java Development Kit, your ant Apache Ant might not work. Uh, one of the reasons we install JDK is because a lot of stuff runs on top of it, like Ant. So that's why we checked if we have Java first and then Ant. So again, this stuff is done for us on these computers. We would be spending the whole time just setting it up uh, if we needed to do it. Uh, but you need to do this at home. So that was sheet number one. Try that at home on your own computer, see if it works. Make notes if it doesn't, and then come tell me about it. Sheet number two. We get a little more involved here. We'll actually get more hands-on here. Um, install Android Developer Tools, ADT. The ADT is basically the source code and editing environment that Google provides us if we want to create Android apps. The ADT bundle we'll download comes with the source code manager, virtual device manager, and a version of Eclipse to edit our code and load our apps onto our devices. How many of you have ever used Eclipse before? 
Okay, so if you've if you've used Eclipse before, we're still going to download a sort of Google officially branded version of it, because it has the Android developer plugin uh, installed. You can use your existing Eclipse, but then you have to install the Android tools to it. But here you kill two birds with one stone. It all comes in a bundle that's like 800 megabytes, and then one gigabyte when you install it. Um, it's all here together. And on this, I do want to check out the website. Uh, let's go ahead and go to your web browser. Let's go to developer.android.com. developer.android.com. So this is our portal for everything about becoming a, an Android developer. They've got three main sections, and basically these three main sections are sort of aligned with the three classes that I teach. There's a design, develop, distribute. So in, uh, in this portal, at your leisure, you should go to the design section. And here it will tell you all of the design considerations you should take into account to develop an app that feels like an Android app. Because iPhone apps feel like iPhone apps, especially when they went to iOS 7. Android apps feel like Android apps, especially now that they're on uh, Android L. They've got their own style. Windows Phone apps feel like a Windows Phone app because they've got their own style. So to get these design principles and color recommendations and all of that, we're going to look at the design screen a little later. Here you can download samples and templates and get ideas about what makes an Android app feel like an Android app, under style, for example. These icons, they, they, they feel or they should feel like an Android app rather than an iPhone app. Um, it talks about what colors are recommended, the actual color formulas, and uh, what to do with typography and grids and, and all of that, and your writing style, what tense you should use, and all of that. Obviously, you can actually do this class. I'm going to go back here. You can do this class. You can make an Android app and never read that. And you'll be fine. You'll have an app. But you might not have an app, really, that feels like an Android app, the UI, the user interface user experience, UX, might not be up to par. We're going to concentrate more in this class, uh, the develop screen. And then on the third class, we'll concentrate on the distribute screen. If we look under develop, here we have all of the samples, tools, references, guides, and training, the whole manual to the Android operating system. The latest developments, the source code, etc. How does this code work? What are what are the parameters for it? Everything is in here. Here's the manual for Android. With various training videos and everything. I'll go back and then distribute. All of, the, all of what you need to learn to actually publish your app, which we'll cover in the third class. You can start previewing it here. Uh, all of the how-tos and guides and what you need to do about uh, creating signing keys and uh, store listings and seeing your dashboard, and all of that stuff. So what I've got in my instructions here are that on this, in this portal, when you log in, at the bottom we've got Get the SDK. We can take a quick look there. Remember, we don't have to download any of this. It's already set up. So I'm going to go to Get the SDK. And here's the thing. Android is constantly developing, constantly evolving. And when we go to this screen, we have Download Eclipse ADT to start coding, to start doing it. And we get, an, we get an Android branded version of Eclipse, everything we need. That's what my whole class is, is set upon. Eventually, what's going to supersede this is the Android Studio, a different kind of IDE, a different type of uh, coding environment 
that Google themselves put together and eventually will recommend or maybe even require for you to use to develop your apps. Right here what they've done for years is to build upon Eclipse, an existing editing environment. They've provided plugins so that you can use Eclipse, which a lot of people use in the programming world, to develop your Android apps. But then Google eventually thought, well, so that we can get the best, we can give the best experience or whatever other reason they have, we'll develop our own editing tool. And right now it's in beta. And eventually it'll be public, uh, fully finished, probably, but you know how Google is, everything's in beta for years. And then the Android Studio will be our preferred editor. I'm not going to teach that because I also need to fully learn how to use it and teach it. So I'm going to be showing you the Eclipse ADT. And this is where, according to my instructions, you would go to download the ADT. That one does not have an installation file. It's just a big old zip file. Something like ADT bundle Windows 8664 with the date. The latest version of, of Eclipse, the ADT, uh, were, were published um, in, uh, in July. That was a couple of months ago, right? So probably a new version is going to come out soon, maybe even during halfway through our class. So you're going to download a zip file and basically unzip it somewhere to your hard drive. I recommend the C drive because I found a quirk. I've been teaching this class a while. And we've been doing versions back from 2012, 2013. And we, we were able to unzip our project, put it on the hard drive, and it worked. And I found, since they've moved over to their most latest versions of Android, 4.4 uh, for Android Wear and 4.4 for um, uh, L Preview, I've found a quirk that more and more people have been telling me about. And I have to go figure out what the problem was. And it seems that their file names are getting longer and longer, and that's causing problems on Windows computers. Because what happens here is it's going to download this big, this large named file, and then to extract the zip file, you do right-click extract, and that's going to make a new folder with that exact same name. And inside of that name is going to be another folder with that exact same name. So suddenly you have a really, really long path. And as you extract everything else in subfolders and subfolders and subfolders, your path is going to reach the limit of 255 characters, which Windows has a limit of. And so people tell me, I'm, I'm barely unzipping my project. I'm already getting errors. What's going on? And in my research, for some reason, on some Windows computers, the default name of the zip file is, is causing the problem. So I have here instructions. There is a quirk in how to fix it. Basically extract it and choose to use a small file name, like Android, instead of ADT bundle Windows 8664 and the, and the year. And that seems to fix it. It's a weird quirk, but that's what I figured out and that seems to work. Let's take a digression here. Go back to your desktop and let's look at computer and then open the C drive, local disk. Uh, the, the Eclipse software, the virtual device software, all of that stuff does not have an installation file. There, and nothing is going to install itself to your start menu. It's wherever you un unzip it to. So if, if we look on our local disk C, there it is. ADT bundle Windows x86 64 2014 So that's where our, our Android tools are going to be at. That's where Apache Ant is at. So keep that in mind, make a note of it somewhere, but it's right on the C drive. And I'm going to remind us, of course, when we actually use it. 1.10 gigs here. Um, so that's where that stuff is. We'll, we'll get back to it. I did notice as I experiment with the Android Studio beta, it does have an installation file and it does create a, a, a little start uh, group and, an, and an, an uninstallation item in your control panel. So it's, it's getting more user-friendly. Right now, Eclipse 
installs itself where you tell it, and to uninstall it, you delete the folder. There's no uninstallation of it. Plus, you delete another hidden folder, which I'll talk about later. But that's what I'm saying about rough around the edges. There's these things about Android that sometimes, you know, they should be dealt with, and I think they are doing it. That's what they're trying to do on the Studio Beta, but I, I'm not quite comfortable teaching a class with beta software. So uh, we'll get to that later. This also requires for Windows to know where you've installed your software. So again, we've got setting the path. That's done for us here. Any questions so far? Anyone still awake? It is a little boring at the moment, but it will we'll get hands-on very soon. Question? Okay, so, can it happen that, that uh, some programmers develop um, this, I don't know what's called, like, uh, tools mm -hmm. for anybody to create a website or uh, an Android app or an iPhone app, and then other programs programmers lose their jobs and then nobody needs the programmers and do you mean that the programmers that made the app lose their jobs and no one updates the app anymore? No, I mean, so now there are websites like Weebly, for example. Oh, sure. And you can use them to easily create a website, so you don't need to um, oh, have okay. programming skills. So well, I sort of feel that perhaps someday this will be a lot easier and we'll get to that point, maybe. Um, but there's always going to be use for people that know programming and can do and can make apps because uh, those are more higher paid than let's say graphic designers. Everyone can learn Photoshop but to learn uh, you know HTML or JavaScript or Java or C++ or C Sharp that's a different sort of, of person. So I think there's always going to be a, a space for, for people that know how to do this stuff because this is rather complicated. That's why I've got you know 10 sheets of paper to get this all set up. Maybe one day it'll be one sheet of paper but um, we'll see. Um, so continuing on my sheets here, if you're if if you if you're going to be developing uh, Android apps or any sort of app, eventually the stuff evolves, right? I've, I've taught this class for a few years now, and we were we were working with like Android version four point one. 4.0, 4.1, and then now they're on 4.4L, uh, probably 4.5 at some point. So the software evolves. So that gets us to the issue about, should I update my software when new software comes out? The short answer is no. It's going to cause you probably a lot more problems than you're willing to deal with at the point that you're developing your app. I would not update the software of my app when I'm working on an app. I would do it after I've developed my app so that my project is finished, it's out there, it's live and such, and then I can start to learn a whole brand new bit of stuff. Because so many times people take these classes and a new version of the software comes out and you know we're stuck in this room with version 2, let's say, because we're not going to update the software in these rooms every time there's new software. That's, that's unwieldy. But people at home download version 3 and we're on version 2 here. And I have to deal with that, but I would recommend when you're when you're at home, whatever version you're working with, stick with that version, even if a new version comes out, until you're comfortable sort of starting from scratch. Because I've found lots of times that it's much harder to upgrade or update something that works than starting over. You might think, well, starting over, that's a big waste of time, perhaps. And I've tried to do both methods, and I don't know, it really feels that it's, it really works a lot better to, to start over, because it's new software, new versions of Java come out. It was version 1.7 when I was teaching this, you know, six months ago. Now it's 1.8. Uh, they're on version Android 4.4L 4 at the moment. It, it keeps evolving. So right now what we're going to do is we're going to load up the SDK, and it'll probably tell us, update your software don't do it. If you've already done it, you might want to restart your computer. But uh, here's what we're going to do. Uh, we're going to go back and open the computer window. Open computer. And we're going to open the ADT bundle folder in the C drive.
And we have here a the SDK manager. Double click that to open it. And at that point, possibly, depending on your system, you might already have a fail point. Um, I've taught this class several times, and oftentimes, or sometimes, when people try to do this at home at this point, nothing happens. They double click it, a black screen shows up for a moment, goes away, nothing happens. And oftentimes, the reason for that is, I've got it here in my instructions, uh, the SDK manager doesn't know where your Java tools are. So that's why in my instruction number one, I have set your Java path right there. So if you're double clicking your SDK manager and nothing happens, make sure you set this up properly. Make sure you spelled it all correctly here because actually you're going to see in your folder possibly something that says JDK180 and JRE180. Java Development Kit, Java Runtime Environment. They might be both in the same folder. You might not notice which one you copy and paste with, or whatever you write here. But notice my instructions say JDK. You might have a JRE in your system. Don't put that here. This might not work. Everything we're going to talk about. We want that to say JDK. And if that's set up and you double click the SDK manager, it should eventually pop up with this screen here. Android SDK manager. This is basically to see all of the Android source code, to download the latest versions of it, to download the emulator images, to uh, update our code and all of that. As a matter of fact, as I load this up, it's telling me down here, why don't you install, why don't you update 14 packages? Do not do that. Don't do that when you come into this lab because you're going to spend time downloading 500 megabytes of software that when you restart these computers will be gone. Remember, these computers, and if you're new, these computers have deep freeze which means anything you save to any part of the computer on the desktop and the program files, whatever, when you restart the computer, it erases. It goes back to our factory settings. So you're going to waste time and effort and bandwidth downloading all of this software that is, not gonna, is only going to work for us in one day, and the next time you have to do it again. So don't do it. When you're at home, you could if you want to, but again, I don't recommend updating this stuff when you're actually working on an app. Download it as per my instructions, set it up as per my instructions, and stick with it until you're comfortable with, with worst case scenario of starting over. Because oftentimes you do. Yes? What's that? What about it? Is it compliant? No, so let's look at my instructions right here because I addressed that. On my instructions here, I have on sheet number two, set up the SDK. I have a section right here that I, that I actually answer that. So what, we're ba what I'm basically saying is this might change in a few weeks during the middle of our class. Right now, this is still a preview. Android L, which is API 20, is, uh, is L with a preview. Before that, or actually concurrently, Android 4.4 W API 20 is also kicking around and it's it's uh, live at the moment and then before that is 4.42 API 19 so Android has uh, about three or Google has about three ways to delineate what version of Android are we working with um, there's the there's the Android number that it scheme that goes this way, Android 4.4.2, 4.4.3 or 4.5 or whatever they're going to do, Android 4.3, 4.0, 3.2, etc. back to 1.5. They have that sort of nomenclature, yeah. version numbers. They have another nomenclature which is a constantly increasing number, API 3, 4, 10, 18, 20. And of course, one day there'll be API 21, that might be Android 5.0, I don't know. 
And then the third way, the third nomenclature for dealing with Android version numbers is a code name. And these are alphabetical based on uh, suites, uh, based on pastries. So there's been Android Eclair, Android Froyo, Android Gingerbread, Android Honeycomb, A, B, C, D, H, Android Jelly Bean, and the latest one, uh, Android K, Kit Kat. So there's been different uh, treats that are their code name. The one that I deal with remembering is the Android version number here. And I, I don't want to remember pastries and all of that and think alphabetically and all of that. It's cute to think, yeah, I'm running Android KitKat. Uh, well, you probably mean Android API 19, right? Um, so there's various ways to talk about Android version numbers. And right now, well, why is there a W here and why is there an L here? Well, W is Android Wear, the watch. We're not going to deal with Android Watch yet. It's uh, kind of out of our scope at the moment. So Android W is Android Wear, API 20. And then API 20L is probably going to be 4.4.3 or 4.5. I don't know. It's going to be the next version. L. Maybe uh, Lemon Meringue Pie. I don't know what they're going to do. Um, but L. So here it's suggesting to us, let's update to the latest version. We will not. We will actually turn off the check marks for all of these. So if you click the top level here, it will turn off the check mark for the whole group. Turn off all the check marks presented. Anywhere that there's a check mark, turn it off. <clears throat> this is all in my instructions right here. Turn off all check marks. Now, when you download the ADT bundle at home, um, it will automatically come with it will automatically most likely come with Android W activated. So, following my instructions here, I have it. I have it that it says you're you're going to remove some of those preview APIs. We don't need them. They're, they're still in preview. They're, they're still kind of in beta. They're going to cause you more trouble than, than you need at the moment. So my instructions here talk about removing these versions. And instead, installing a slightly older version, API 19. And again, this is already set up for us. We don't have to do it. But at home, you would select to turn on the SDK platform and the Intel x86 Atom image. Um, what this is, the reason I wrote this is because we are going to be using a more stable version of, of Android that's been around already. And that's under 4.4.2 API 19. The actual code, the source code, and right here for a system image for a virtual device. And technically, that's optional if you're going to use a real device. If you're going to install your Android software, your, your app, onto a real device, technically you don't really need this because you're not going to run virtual devices. I still recommend to set up virtual devices, as we'll talk about, because I have here a 4.5-inch screen, and I would love to taste my, test my app on a 5-inch screen, on a 7-inch tablet, on a 10-inch tablet. I'm not going to go, buy a, go out and buy a 10-inch tablet. I can create a virtual 10-inch tablet on my device. And therefore, we're downloading the CPU for it, the image, the system image. And that's all in my instructions here for, for, um, for what you want to do at home. So on our computers here, you don't need to do anything here. It's all set up for us. I took the time with our technician to set it up. It's all fine for us. At home, you can decide if you want to update your packages, but at least do what I'm saying here about installing the API 19. I've also got some items under Extra that I recommend that you activate. Uh, the Google USB driver, 
and especially if you're running a computer that has an Intel CPU, which is just about all of them, to install the where is it at? The Intel right here, the Intel x86 emulator accelerator, the Hexum. This will help you run your virtual devices faster. And I've got a pretty new Intel i7 fourth generation with 16 gigs of RAM, one terabyte hard drive, and this still helps. This still speeds up your virtual devices, especially if you're running a 10-inch tablet. Because even though I've got a pretty good computer, these things, even they're completely different architecture. They run on a completely different CPU, an ARM CPU, not an Intel CPU. So therefore, you're trying to sort of do translation. It's as if I wanted to talk to someone that, that knows Portuguese, but I talked to someone that knows it, uh, Spanish first, and then he translates it to Portuguese. So if we sort of learn Portuguese first, with this, we'll be able to run our virtual devices a lot faster, more efficiently. And this causes people some problem, because if you don't have an Intel CPU, this will not work. If you have an AMD CPU on your laptop, for example, the Intel emulator accelerator won't work. Wrong CPU. Not wrong CPU, but not compatible CPU. If you do have an Intel, if you do have an AMD processor at home, still do all of this stuff and then tell me how well it works. It'll probably work okay, but this makes it work a little better. And I have a, I have a instructions here. Again, we don't need to do this here. We've done it for you. Well, you've installed that stuff, and then you actually need to install the Hexum. Just because you've downloaded it from this screen doesn't mean it's installed. You have to go through these steps here and go to the folder and install it manually. And then, okay, now you've got this hardware accelerator. So there's lots of steps. Let's take our first break, and then we'll do this next step, which actually will allow us to create a virtual device. We'll have a real virtual Android device running on our computer. But let's take a break first. A lot of talking. Uh, it's about 7.20-ish, uh, so let's take a break 10 minutes. 7.30. We'll be back at 7.30, and then we'll continue.